Let's suppose this is the architecture diagram of your web application. It's composed by one or more backends which serve a single page application and that are stored into a relational database, common enough, right? Initially, you created it for your first client, let's say a big company, a big organization. Now you are doing well and you get your second client. Cheers! <laughs> But wait, is your web application ready to cater for the second client? In other words, what are the tenant models you can adopt? In this video, we will get an overview of the major options we have on the desk. First of all, I want to reassure you, many companies initially started with a success product but single tenant and later they switched to a multi-tenant product. SAP, Infor, Epicor are three examples of companies which started exactly as a single tenant company and now are present in the magic quadrant of Gartner regarding the software as a service cloud URP. The simplest option you can take into account is cloning the entire infrastructure and having multiple replicas of your application. No other options ensure a such high level of isolation. It's clear enough, isn't it? The tenants are confined within the boundaries of their infrastructures and so tenants are silos. Unfortunately, this option comes with some severe drawbacks. For example, it's inefficient because you can't spread the cost of shared resources across all tenants because there are no shared resources. And there is an efficiency from a point of view of uh, operations. For example, think about to keep updated the Postgres versions across all replicas of your infrastructure. In case you chose this option, you could mitigate the pitfall embracing the automation and specifically the infrastructure as a code that allows you to keep in sync all replicas of your infrastructure simply running the Terraform scripts. Leaving the single tenant model and moving to a multi tenant application, there are three options from a point of view of data storage database per tenant, multi tenant database, and schema per tenant. Let's get an overview of each of them. Let's start from database per tenant. We have a single app connected to multiple databases. Each database is dedicated to a tenant. On board a new tenant, it means uh, we would clone the database and we would assign it to the new tenant. It's possible to club uh, some databases in the same virtual machine or leave a tenant in a virtual machine dedicated to it. This model ensures the highest level of isolation with respect to the um, options we will, we, will, we will see later. Regarding the operations are pretty easy. Uh, let's think about to apply a disaster recovery for a single tenant. Uh, it's enough to dump a single database and restore it to restore the given tenant. There is no added complexity for the queries. It's a matter of selecting the right database before querying. And so the application can perform the same queries it would perform in case of a single tenant model. But there is a major drawback. The application has to keep opened a data source and a connection pool for each database, so for each tenant. So let's suppose to manage 50, 100, 1000 tenants, it might be cumbersome. So these options might result a, a little bit complicated in managing tens of tenants. There is a different approach called multi-tenant single database. We have a single application and a single database which stores the data coming from different tenants. We have to add to all tables an extra column which is the discriminator. Uh, so in the same tables we have records uh, of all tenants and the discriminator says which data belong to. This is for sure the cheapest solution because the cost of that single database is shared across all tenants and it's rarely that the database is uh, in an idle and ineffective period. From the other hand, this option is affected by the noisy neighbor problem because a peak of usage done by a tenant due an EV query can cause a performance degradation of another tenant. The operations are complex because it's not easy to apply a disaster recovery procedure when the records of all tenants are mixed in the same tables. 
Regarding the query complexity, all developers must remember to add an extra WHERE clause to all queries, for example, supposing to fetch the orders of the tenant1, uh, uh, the query should be SELECT STAR from orders where tenant ID is equal to 1. Uh, forgetting this WHERE clause is risky because uh, it breaks the segregation and a tenant can fetch the data of all tenants of another tenant. So, in my view, this option has the lowest isolation level. Sharded multi-tenant database is a variant of this option. The data of tenants are still mixed in the same tables, but the tenants are distributed in more than one database. For example, in this picture we can see the tenants 1, 2, 3 are located into the first database, and the tenant 6 is located alone in the database 3. We give up the lowest cost to benefit or more scalability and the chance to balance uh, these tenants with the highest peak of loads in a way that these tenants are not placed together in the same database. And finally we see the third approach which is schema per tenant. We have a single application and a single database and within it we, uh, we assign a schema for each tenant. So onboarding a new tenant it means to clone the schema and the entire set of tables within it and assign the new schema to the new tenant. We have a good level of isolation. The operations are quite simple because it's feasible to restore a schema from a backup. Uh, we manage one only data source and one only connection pool and we don't have added query complexity because the application can run the same queries it would run in case it was a single tenant application. The pitfall is having noise enables but it's solvable, uh, spreading the schemas in more than one database. Honestly, this last option is my favorite because it picks up the pros of all previous options, discarding the major cons, but anyway, before to approach a multi-tenant model, I would suggest you to have an, an assessment of your tenant, so ask few questions, but very important, like how many tenants are you going to onboard, which is the workload per tenant, do you prefer the performances or the cost savings, and which is the complexity, can you afford from a point of view of development and operations and infrastructure. Please let me know in the comments which is the tenant model you adopted and why. Share your feedback and have your bits well set. Yeah.